The chain rule allows us to differentiate compositions. It's one of the most important rules of calculus. It's often stated in two different ways. So we'll start with what's traditionally called version one of the chain rule. The setting of this rule is that you have three variables, t, x, and y, and you have two functions. So these variables are related to each other by functions. X is a function of T and Y is a function of X. Before we proceed any further, let's give a concrete example. Say that a spherical balloon is being inflated and you're keeping track of three variables, the time you've spent inflating the balloon, the radius of the balloon, and the volume of the balloon. Well, as time passes, the radius of the balloon increases. So the radius is a function of time. I don't know how physically realistic this is, but just for simplicity, say that radius is a linear function of time. Now, the volume of the balloon depends on the radius. V equals four thirds pi the radius cubed. We'll come back to this example. But what's the chain rule for? Well, if y is a function of x and x is a function of t, then by the power of composition, y is a function of t. We've chosen to frame this by saying that the radius depends on the time and the volume depends on the radius. But it would also be true to say that the volume depends on the time. Well, if y is a function of t, we can ask how quickly y is changing with respect to t. We can ask what dy dt is. Down here, if volume is a function of time, we can ask how quickly the volume changes with time. Well, given these two functions, 
we could take two derivatives, but neither of them is what we're looking for. We can take the derivative of the radius with respect to time, and we can take the derivative of the volume with, the res with respect to the radius. When we use the power rule, this three comes down and cancels this third. But neither of these derivatives is the derivative where we've just asked about. What the chain rule says is that in this situation, you take the derivative of this function and you take the derivative of this function and you multiply those together. The derivative of the first function times the derivative of the second function. Down here, we found these two derivatives. Neither of them were what we were looking for, but d of e dt is dr, dt times d of e dr. And you'll know you're using the chain rule correctly when you can cancel on the right-hand side and get the left-hand side. I mean, none of these are actually a fraction. They're just notation for the derivative. But if these were fractions, the drs would cancel, and this would become the true statement, d of e dt equals d of e dt. So these derivatives are two and four pi r cubed, which is eight pi r cubed. But whenever we use the chain rule like this, there is a final step. If we're looking for the derivative of the volume with respect to time, time ought to be our variable. What's this R doing here? We don't want that, we want time. Well, fortunately, we know what R is. Sorry, I don't want to restart the whole video because of that single error, but four pi r squared. Anyway, r is 2t. So if we want our variable to be t, we just replace r with 2t. Um, 2 squared is 4. 
32 pi t squared. And that is version one of the chain rule. And version one of the chain rule is kind of specialized. It usually shows up if you are doing word problems because, you know, because we have to have three variables and most of the equations we look at don't have three variables, just X and Y. However, although version one of the chain rule seems like it exists in a pretty specialized setting, we'll see that the chain rule is not specialized at all, but can be used to take the derivatives of all sorts of things.